Hey, Pumpkin. How you doing, bite? Yeah, hey, good morning, Pumpkin. Okay, it was nice to see you too. Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Ah, I hope you're good. I'm great. So, been a minute since did just gardening videos and vlogs. So here's just like a life update. I uh, it mentioned over the months how I've had a shoulder injury and been waiting for surgery and that over time it's been getting worse and it's been more difficult to uh, do certain things that are seemingly simple and that's you know one of the reasons I had dropped down from doing three videos a week to two videos a week and then uh, it, things have almost gotten to a point where I was like I think I might just need to go away altogether. I'm not going to do that. I'm not just going to walk away from the channel until I can get the surgery done. I have an appointment in a few days, so hopefully the surgeon will be able to get me in quickly and I'll be able to get on with things. But just the way things have progressed, it's um it's 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 difficult to be comfortable and to move properly and to edit videos. And when I've talked about it before, I've said the same thing. No well wishes. I'm fine. Could be so much worse. That it, but when I say shoulder injury, things have gotten to a point where I have to be extremely cautious and careful about the way I'm moving my body, even the way I sit, the way I lay down, everything. And, uh, you know, I was ready to have this surgery many months ago. And, and then had to go to different doctors because it turned out that even though they took my provider they didn't take like my specific plan and then wait several more weeks to get in with another doctor and then finally get somewhere had the same thing happen but at least they were able to take a biopsy of the area everything's good this is why there's no need for complaining or well wishes things could be so much worse than the but then the shutdown happened so just like many people who were hoping to get things done medically had to wait and things opened up I uh, immediately started calling around to new doctors, new surgeons, and as soon as they could get me, it was June 17th. Uh, there were some others that could have gotten me in a little bit earlier, but they weren't really surgeons that I felt comfortable going to. So, uh, you know, my heart sank at that time, back in May when things opened back up and I found out I still had to wait all this time. It's one of these things where the issue just kept getting worse and worse and worse and you know, every few days it's worse. And then the idea of waiting till June 17th is pretty hard. So the last couple weeks I have mostly just, I've been like, I'm like a human blobfish. I've mostly just been sitting around and trying to stay comfortable. I really, I can't dig. I can't use a shovel. I can't lift most things. Even holding the camera, I have to be very careful about how I'm holding my arm. So hopefully there, there's an end in sight here. I'm hopeful that this doctor will be able to do something quickly I don't know you know I know the operating rooms and everything are very backed up right now so it's, it just is what it is but um until that surgery happens I've gotten to a place where I have to uh, be very calm and very still but there are still things that we can do here I'm not going to be able to like plant up entire garden beds and stuff like that because like I said I can't use a shovel right now it's that motion the digging motion it's too much I can't do it but we can still talk plants hey over the next few weeks we can watch how weeds grow because I can't pull them so that's fun you see what when the garden naturalizes with nature good times and here's I've been what listen it's too hot to be standing around with the hose things got very dry over here oh, and because it's my right shoulder which then my right arm it that's what has to hold still editing is difficult that's why things drop down to just twice a week and then i debated maybe just like i said taking a break until things get better but because i don't know when i'll be able to have the surgery i don't want to do that because i mean i could go to this doctor here in a few days and then it could turn out they can't get me into an OR for another few months. I'm gonna walk away from the channel for a few months. Though after the surgery there will be a several week recovery. That's fine. We'll deal with those things when we get there. But here, you know, I did do a few things while away. I got this hydrangea tree potted up into this very large pot that my adenidia palm was in and I talked about, did I, that was a weird influx wasn't it my adenidia palm, whatever i uh, mentioned in the last garden tour that the adenidia palm needed a bigger pot and the adenidia palm was in this pot and this hydrangea tree needed a pot and then this is the pot that i put the adenidia palm in see it right there 
this is it was like a terracotta color and then it had like some pink and polka dots on it i spray painted it with this hammered bronze spray paint really just because that's what i had no other particular reason i have also had some plants come in that's a fun thing to talk about a lot of gingers this year is going to be very heavy on the gingers but these are all uh, zingibers i hear people pronounce it differently but zingiber myoga it's a uh, hearty ginger and uh, they are in teeny teeny tiny little pots uh, so there was an update i don't like talking about the shoulder situation so it was probably very scattered and all over the place which i know is generally just me in a nutshell i, I felt that i should put that out there just in case I have this appointment on Wednesday and then maybe I won't be in shape to film or edit any videos for next Saturday or for middle of the week. So that's where that is. Or if I if I do just disappear, which I prefer to never do, to just disappear without telling anybody, but if I can't hold a camera or edit a video or, you know, do something like that, then that's just the way it is. If I go away for a while, then that's that's where I am recovering. And that's a good thing. Or waiting on surgery still a good thing could be so 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 much worse and i do have people around who are going to be able to help me with things i can set plants out and they can help me get them planted it's just not really conducive to youtube because i, I don't know when people are helping you with something i feel weird being like you need to make sure you can do this now for this schedule like i don't know i don't really do that when someone's helping i kind of just prefer for it to be on their terms and whatever works for them so it's not like everything's just going to sit around for months until i can get it planted i have no idea how long it would be but uh there will be some things where i would prefer to do it myself but i'll figure something out get things done at some point in some way i'll explain everything more in depth once it's resolved the only reason i haven't gotten specific is because i don't want unsolicited medical advice going down into the comment section and then uh, potentially someday somebody who's maybe in a similar situation is seeing that and then uh, potentially being harmed by it so uh, there will be more clarity on things in the future. I was going to go ahead and get this potted up, this Edenetia palm, get some annuals and tropicals tucked up around it. The sun's getting kind of strong, getting close to 90 degrees. And uh, the other part I don't think I mentioned is that I'm not supposed to sweat, which is great for someone who loves being outdoors and breaking a sweat. It's just those stitches. There's a lot of swelling around them. And if I move wrong, then it's kind of like my stitches like the part that stick out will dive under the swelling and then when i move back they pop back up so it's like i'm just getting pierced my skin's getting pierced over and over and over again that hurts it's not fun and because of that the risk of infection because their skin's just being stretched and ripped and torn all around them not great so uh, that's the one of the big reasons i'm just supposed to chill and just sit still and be very aware of how I'm moving my body. But I have a bunch of plants here that we can talk about. Also, sorry if that last part grossed you out. It's just, it's my reality right now. Like I was saying though, look at this table full of plants. Do I need to turn this off? I'll turn it off. As long as I'm not sweating. I know it doesn't look super exciting, but the gingers are here. I've been wanting to do a lot with gingers over the last few years. I've already done some things, but a long time ago in my garden, <laughs> really, really just getting sloppy here putting this on my tripod as i'm talking sorry i used to have the zingibers zingiber whatever you want to call it the myogas in a, a shadier part of my garden and they did wonderfully until we had one bad winter and it got to like 13 below freezing i think that's it was it was terrible it was a really really bad winter uh, and then they didn't come back and i don't know if it was the cold or if it was that this big maple that's back here you see this there's a big maple there so i had the gingers planted underneath there that tree grew and uh, so maybe it, they weren't getting enough morning sun to wake them up and get them moving whatever the case i'm gonna give them a go again so that's what i have here in the back and now in the front i know they don't look very exciting right now but they will once these get into the ground and some nice loose loosed in some nice loose soil that's well drained organically rich these will really start to take off i mean it might be a couple years but they will they'll fill out have uh, all this beautiful foliage there's three different varieties here this one right here i mean they don't look that great they didn't look that great when they came in they were really squished into their packages but you see that variegation there it is a very pretty ginger and this one is called white feather there's white feather and dancing crane for the variegated ones, at least the most common variegated ones of the zingibers. And uh, you can see that foliage. 
Isn't that beautiful? I think it does lend itself to a nice tropical appeal. Look at the way that's trembling. I don't feel like I'm trembling like that. It's a good plant for cooler gardens. These are good into zone six. If you have them situated well in like zone five, maybe near a wall by some pavement with a good winter mulching, they might do okay for you there too. They die back in the winter time and just come back usually late spring, like when the heat kicks in. And you can harvest the roots and eat them. They're edible. And there's a, well, actually some fantastic information out there about the ways to do that. When I do like a dedicated video to planting these up and whatnot, maybe that's something I'll talk about. Here is the other one. This is white feather. You can see the variegation on this one if it were in focus. Hello, there we go. Much more extreme on the white feather, but it's um, not as large of a plant or as lovely as a plant, <laughs> if you could say that, compared to the others on the table. But that's okay. It's going to grow. So it's kind of hard to point out that variegation, especially the way the sun is. There we go. You can kind of see that a little bit better. My experience with the uh, dancing crane, if I called this white feather before, I apologize. White feather was, that was, that was this one over here. That's what I just talked about. Dancing cranes, the other of the very common variegated zingibers. And in my experience, the dancing crane does tend to scorch more in the sun. These should only be getting like bright, bright morning sun for a few hours and then dappled light throughout the rest of the day anyways. But if you live in the right climate, you can keep them in full sun. The basically, like if you're like the Pacific Northwest or coastal areas, you can usually get away with more sun on the plants. Where I live, the, especially in the heat of the summer, they tend to do better with you know, a good amount of morning sun, at least five hours, somewhere in there, four to five hours, and then dappled light throughout the rest of the day. So those are the two of the variegated ones that have the white on them. The others that I have, I have three of the others that's back here and there's just not much to show about it because it's still young and not showing its variegation. But that variety is called Silver Arrow. What's neat about the Silver Arrow is that it looks to me, I'll put a thingy up here on the screen, to me it looks more similar to uh, almost like an Alpinia Zarembit, but like obviously a knockoff, right? Not the same thing, but will have a similar appeal depending on the intensity of the yellow variegation and the blending of the variegation in the foliage. It's going to look really cool. I'm going to have this over underneath some of my bananas. So it'll, they only get like about three feet tall, if even. They'll be underneath there. They'll get dappled light from the banana trees in the afternoon. Over the next three to five years, they'll spread out. These will all form a really nice clump of foliage that just kind of comes up and pours out. And the flowers are nice on these, not anything super exciting like you would see on some other gingers but the edible factor is nice the things you can do culinary wise and health wise with them is great it's you know it's not necessarily like a turmeric or something like that but still has some good benefits i didn't really get these so i could dig them up and eat them but when they get big enough i probably will because they will need to be divided every few years in order to keep them from becoming too tight down below i want to be able to have them I'll have the space to spread out. I got tongue tied there. I'm sorry. So those are the zingibbers. I'm sure there are people out there who are mad about how I'm saying it. But like I said, I hear people say it both ways, other ways. And the next one is not a zingiber. This is Hedichi. Hello, focus. Hedichi. It's called Slim's Orange. So the butterfly gingers, they get much larger typically. I have the Fiesta. I've grown the Polani. I've grown the Flaming Torch. That's just to name a few. I've grown an awful lot of them. So far, the Flaming Torch has been my favorite as far as cold hardiness goes here in Zone 6. I already have one of these, the Slim's Orange. You can see in comparison to other butterfly gingers, it stays much shorter. I think it only gets about three feet tall. We'll have orange flower spikes on it that the pollinators absolutely love. And uh, the foliage is much more dainty. It's not as loud and extreme as the other butterfly gingers that get like I said, much larger, larger foliage and just this is something that will be better for texture. It will still have the effect with the flowers for the pollinators and the colors to have in the garden as the larger ones do, but without taking up as much space. And I do think I mentioned I already have one of the Slim's Orange. So that's for some reason hard to say. I don't know why, but I wanted another one because the one I have, I've been keeping potted and I just toss it in my garage in the winter time and splash it with some water like once a month. They're a winter dormant plant, like on their own, the Hidichium, at least the varieties I've been growing, they will go into their own scheduled dormancy. So I just put them somewhere dark, cool, 
fairly dry and just kind of let them hang out for the winter time and then bring them back out when temperatures start to warm back up. A lot of the butterfly gingers are actually much more cold tolerant than we give them credit for. So a lot of what's left on this table are other varieties of butterfly gingers of Hidichiums that I want to trial over the next few years. And then in case you're getting bored of gingers, I have some things that aren't gingers. I'll go ahead and grab those. Okay, and then here are some other plants that are real. What did my, excuse me, back up. <laughs> Look at the viewfinder when you're filming a video. Sometimes when I'm vlogging, this is kind of a vlog, when I'm vlogging I get a little bit too relaxed and start feeling myself and don't really pay attention to what's going on with the camera. So this is a Tradescanthia palita cartus giant. Is that how you would pronounce it? I don't know. It's a purple heart plant and um, I spent $16 on it, which I felt really dumb about when it came in the mail. I think I'm hoping that this is one of those plants where it's going to need to go in the ground to show off its potential. The description for this plant, what has made me want it. It's supposed to have much larger foliage than your typical Tradescantia palita or Secrezia palita. I, it is a Tradescantia. It is still often sold at nurseries commonly as a Secrezia. So, uh, but just to make that clear, same plant, purple heart plant. And this is a variety that, like I said, is just supposed to have much, much, much larger foliage, which I, like I said, I can kind of see that down here, sort of, kind of maybe. I've grown plenty purple heart plants that some had larger foliage than others, so and it was just, this is one of those plants where I think it's going to have to get in the ground or get into a pot and gonna have to give it some time and then be embarrassed that I spent $16 on something that I could grab for three or four dollars at a local nursery. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's gonna be really cool. It's something I've been eyeballing on this vendor's website, Plant Delights Nursery. All the plants I've talked about so far in the next two are from Plant Delights Nursery. I've ordered from them a bunch over the years. I've always had great luck. They are pricey. That is one thing I will say about them is some of the prices are very reasonable. I uh, think 28 bucks for these teeny tiny little zingibers, kind of extreme. I uh, just assumed that they were going to be larger, like the Slim's Orange that I showed, the last ginger I showed, uh, but that was just me being dumb. It says how large the pots are, so uh, it, it's just, Oops, it's okay. I'm excited to have them. Those have kind of been on my wish list to get my ginger garden back up and going for a while. The next plant, look at this. It's an alocasia. A very dirty tag. Alocasia cuculata. <laughs> cuculata, cu -cu 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 You see it. That's a fun name. The variety is called Yellowtail. So it's a yellow variegated alocasia. And the flowers, flowers, the foliage, is smaller, more dainty. It reminds me of the Tiny Dancer. Right now I'm only seeing the variegation on one of the leaves and it is very, very faint and hard to see with the harsh lighting and the way my fingers kind of show through things, but you can sort of see it there. It's just a yellow variegated alocasia. It's supposed to say smaller, not a great big huge alocasia, but the leaf shape, really neat. And uh, that yellow variegation, <laughs> when it um, starts to show again, hopefully it will, it's gonna be pretty cool. So that's that plant. And then the last one, this plant back here is one that I was a little bit worried about when it showed up. I've had most of these for about two weeks. These are from separate orders. Some of them I've had a little bit longer, but <laughs> you can see it wasn't too happy after shipping. They were packed just fine. They were packed very well, actually, but it just, it threw a little bit of a fit. This is a Paltandra virginica. I'll show you the label here in just a moment. The sun is so strong that it's hard to get you guys to be able to see the foliage there. These plants have very similar foliage to an alocasia, but here's the exciting part. See that? Party down to zone 5A and it gets three feet tall. Talk about a nice, big, lovely, tropical looking plant that's hardy all the way down to zone five. It is, it's in the Arum family and they are really wetland, boggy type plants. So they need a soil that is going to stay moist at all times, that's very important. The Paltandra is a really, it's a common plant, but they aren't really used in gardens all that often. I see them plenty in bog gardens and in ponds, but this can go in your garden, like I said, as long as the soil stays moist because they are a bog type plant. Looking at the description from Plant Delight's website, they really nail it with their description. I'm talking about how they resemble a xanthosoma type elephant ear, which they really do. It's harder to see that here with the one that's right in front of me, but I'll pop it up from their website and you can get a better look at that. I admit, that's some pretty cool foliage, but it's not something you can let dry out. So it's going to have to be situated 
very properly. But if you have a pond or a bog or something like that, definitely a great option. They do grow vigorously too, so a, a little plant will go a long way over time. I have an area in my garden where two different garden beds collide and then there's a drain and that's where a lot of water collects and that's probably where I'm going to plant these and they'll kind of grow on their own in that area and spread and probably just stick to the areas of the soil that stay nice and moist and they'll be kind of controlled on their own by that because the, they'll want to keep spreading but the further they go up the berms in that garden bed the soil is more dry they won't do well there so they'll also be somewhat contained which i think is going to be neat may not be enough sun though because <laughs> there's a tree that's grown quite large so i might situate them somewhere else or put them in the ground at an area where again the soil just stays nice and moist i've talked a lot about it and it's not that exciting to look at right now but someday it's going to be absolutely beautiful it's a plant that i would like to see in more people's gardens because it's just it's so pretty but it, you, it, things do need to be very moist though for it moist 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 i'm sorry i hope i'm not triggering the moist people the moist people the people who don't like the word moist. Okay, and then the last little bunch here, these are from Aloha Tropicals. They're in Hawaii. Plants that, that, they're very small. I'm disappointed with the size of these plants they sent. These are, almost all these are Hedichiums, and they're just pink, pink butterfly gingers. I've, every single one that I've tried in my garden so far have either been orange or white, and I wanted to trial a bunch of pink ones and see which ones would be more cold hardy and be able to talk about the vigor and everything, but I can't do that until I've grown them for a few years. So here's the start of a video that will come out in like a year or two from now. How exciting, right? Not much to look at. It's four, one, two, three, four, five different pink varieties. And then this little guy in the front here is a Heliconia dwarf rostrata. It's not much to look at. The Heliconia rostrata is probably one of the most classic and well-known of the heliconias the lobster claw pendant type the beautiful yellow red and green tipped flowers well the dwarf rostrata is similar to that but the plant stays smaller it's better for flowering in containers and overwintering indoors but the flower is also smaller i had one of these years ago that i got from a place called tejas tropical t-e-j-a-s i think they were in texas i can't remember uh but they stopped selling heliconias they were my favorite like probably my all-time favorite place to order plants from back in the day it was probably the only place i could find heliconias still i mean there aren't many places i can find heliconias where they'll send them to you as actual large potted plants as opposed to just sticks and rhizomes there's some places top tropicals has them sometimes um stokes trap no stokes tropicals they're closed they're, they're not around anymore i'm sure there are other places that i'm just not aware of but anyways Tejas Tropicals, they had the Dwarf Rostratas. I grew in for a few years and I absolutely just loved it. And I haven't been able to find them ever since. I'm talking like this is probably 12 years ago. So it's been a while. Aloha Tropicals has had them on their site for a long time. I just hadn't bothered including them in my order. And um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, look at how tiny this is. How are you get what? Come on now. Whatever. I'm excited to have it. These will be fun things to look at probably at the end of the summertime. The gingers, I think that they will do their best, all of them, getting them into the ground. The nice about them being small is a big hole won't have to be dug as long as the soil is already nice and loose where they're going. Don't want to put gingers in compact, tight soil. They'll grow much slower. Their rhizomes are going to be much more prone to uh, rot and stuff like that sorry there's like a mosquito in my face i've been swatting at my face trying to get them to go away but with these hedichiums i'm not confident that any of those back here are going to be the right size to actually overwinter this year and trial them for cold hardiness but i'll get them in the ground because they will grow faster in the ground than in a container and then in the fall i'll lift them bring them inside and uh, next year i can put them back in the ground and at that point they should be big enough to leave them outside all winter and give them a fair try i don't think at this size it would be likely or fair to the plant to be like hey you're tiny and barely have any roots on you but here's a winter where it could potentially get down to 10 degrees below freezing i would still protect them like i do any of my other gingers with a lot of mulch and siding them properly but it just i think you get what i'm saying a larger plant with a more established root system would do better these need to be grown out for probably a year before i do that so there's not much to say about them. It's just different varieties of pink butterfly gingers and the update y'all on that in a year or two. Uh, we'll talk about them in future garden tours and stuff like that. And then the last plant that um, it's not new, I didn't order it anytime recently, but I just thought it was neat and wanted to talk about it 
because sitting and talking about plants is pretty much all I can do right now. This is a Manfreda, Manfreda virginica, the agave also called a false aloe. These are native to where I live and a lot of the United States and they have very cool succulenty type foliage that is a little bit harder to find unless it's with something like a yucca. But I think the foliage is even more cool and see all the little spots and freckling that they have down below. It's just something that's different from what you typically see in gardens and zones five and six. I can bend that tag down so you can see it a little bit better. I believe they're hardy to zone five, might be zone six. But again, it's just another cool looking cold hardy plant and it's native. It's always nice to be able to plant some natives in your garden. And these will kind of spread out and get wider and wider. I think like 18 inches by maybe eight to 10 inches or even a foot high on the foliage and there are some or at least there used to be i haven't seen them in years but there used to be other varieties sports of the manfreda virginica that had different patterns on their foliage and looked really really cool i think that those kind of got pushed out of the market by the popularity of the mangaves which i totally understand but these are cold hardy you can keep them outside all year long some mangaves are more cold hardy than others mangave being a cross between manfreda and an agave. So this is part of what makes those really, really cool varieties that you see with the mangaves that have the intense foliage and everything. But this is perennial. It can stay in the ground all year. Again, native. And they have fun little flower spikes that come up on them. These are really drought tolerant. They're really good for drier areas in the garden where you don't like maybe want to have a lot of maintenance or if you have a rock garden and you need something that stands out with a little bit more height. Because the more cold you go the colder your climate rock gardens like having a nice succulent garden can be a little bit more tricky because eventually you kind of get to a place where it's like basically sedums and hens and chicks and uh, the sempervivums that is so this is something that is an option to add some variety there are agaves that are more cold tolerant even into zone six and zone five but if you live someplace like i do uh, they still if i keep an agave outside that's supposed to be hardy to where i live they have to be covered well during the winter because the winter moisture collecting inside the centers of those agaves will kill them. You don't have to worry about that with this. It just dies down to the ground and comes back the next year. It's just less maintenance. As they grow and fill out in the garden, it's a pretty similar look. I mean, I think that that is some really cool, interesting looking foliage. Also, if you're not going for a desert style, whether you're trying to mimic bromeliads or agaves or what have you, it's a nice option for the garden. It's the random thing I've thrown in with this odd plant haul, but there it is. It's been sitting around, I've been looking at it, and I wanted to talk about it. So there it is. Probably would have been a good thing to do its own video on, but here we are. Oh, and I got this from a local nursery here in St. Louis called Greenscape Garden. If you're in the St. Louis area, they have a really great selection of natives. I know it's probably weird with all the tropical plants, out here in my garden in St. Louis where, you know, these do not grow outside that I do. Uh, I'm someone who's prone to growing natives, but I just, I think it's good to give back to nature, even if it's not necessarily your entire garden bed, it's nice to make sure to include some of those things. And that's why, you know, this is just an example of a native I like to have around. I have a few others of these that are in the ground. This one's still potted. That's why I was able to bring it over here because I need to stay in the shade because I can't sweat. Not allowed to sweat, that is. And I actually have another plant order that I wanted to fit into this video, uh, but it's coming from FedEx and it's supposed to come today. And also, by the way, today is the day this video is supposed to come out. So if it doesn't come out until late, then that's, that's why. I wasn't feeling up to filming earlier, so sorry about that. That's just kind of maybe going to be the tone for the next, hopefully just few weeks here. I apologize in advance. It's things will be lightly edited and very, very, very casual because I just I can't do much with my body right now. I'm sorry. But yeah, there's another order coming in. I, I guess that that's just going to have to wait because it's coming from FedEx and that anybody who orders from things that show up through FedEx, y'all know that that just means they're just going to kind of come whenever they want to come. It's very unpredictable. I've had things from FedEx where just the road was blocked because of construction so they just didn't deliver the things they just went ahead on their way and came back a few days later so that was a long time ago though hopefully that won't happen now there's construction going on down the road the street that leads up to my street so I always am kind of like eh like I don't know it's gonna depend on if they feel like driving through the one lane road and getting through and 
all those things. We'll see. I don't think I have time to wait for those plants. Basically what I did, I'm giving it all away, but whatever. There's nothing else to do and fill you in. So there are some plants, some cold hardy palms that I've wanted to incorporate into my garden that I've had trouble sourcing. And I found a vendor on eBay months ago and I didn't order them because it was winter time. And then they stopped listing them. I was very disappointed. They listed them again, so I was like, perfect. I ordered four from them and then Plant Vine. Y'all know Plant Vine? What is with that website? They also had them, so I ordered four from them also, and I think it'll be fun to do a comparison video. It's just kind of for fun, really, because eBay isn't a consistent seller of something, so it would be better if I could compare Plant Vine to an actual garden retailer, but I can't find a retailer that sells this particular plant consistently for people, so I just thought it would be fun. And spoiler alert, from, they were cheaper, these plants I ordered, cheaper from Plant Vine than from eBay. But I want to be able to hold them side by side and do a comparison. So hopefully that video will come out in a couple of weeks. They may just spoil the whole thing for you, but you can wait and see what the results are and what the plants are that I'm talking about. So that was fun. Some of these gingers I will be potting up and waiting to get in the ground. The others I'll get placed and hopefully somebody else will be able to plant them for me. When I pot them, I'll be cutting their pots in half so that things are nice and shallow. I have this Costas ginger back here, a red button ginger. You can see how that just, it's a nursery container that's been cut, so it's nice and shallow. Gingers have shallow root systems. They don't need to go in anything very deep, and that way there's less issues with having to worry about rot or anything like that. But I'm going to try and get the bulk of them in the ground. It just, you know, kind of depends on if I can get someone to plant them for me. Okay, that's going to do it. Uh, thank you, everyone, for hanging out. Things are going to be weird for a while. I apologize. I'll explain this at another day, another time in the future. I have an animal pet project going on here. I'll be doing my best to make sure that with everything that's going on with the shoulder situation, to still try and get a video out every week, hopefully two. It's just gonna, I'm just going with the flow here. I'm going to have to wait and see what happens. And it's day to day. Some days are better than others. Um, I'm grateful that there is a solution to my issue. So I'm really, I'm more excited about what's to come over the next few weeks. Even though it means I may not be as active here on YouTube. I might not, I, I can say I'm probably definitely not going to be as good about replying to comments. Because that's, it's a lot of right hand typing. And I haven't been on my phone a ton. Uh, but you know, if they're good days and bad days, and I'll do my best. But I see y'all, I see you down in the comments, and I appreciate you. What's going on in your gardens? How's life going? Hopefully, okay. Uh, and again, my last video, Black Lives Matter, thank you. There were some beautiful stories from people in the comments section of that video, and thank you everyone for sharing and uh, being a part of that and being able to speak up. And I think that that's a beautiful and wonderful thing. And uh, to the people who told me if I brought it up again, they didn't subscribe, you can go. Bye-bye. I told you, I don't care. And you don't need to tell YouTubers when you're unsubscribing. It's like, if you're at a party and someone's just totally a wet rag, like ruining everyone's time, and they're like, I'm leaving. Does anybody care? No. Bye. Go away. Shoo-shoo. Get out of here. <laughs> Threaten people into not talking about important matters? I don't think so. Not on my channel. Yeah, like I said, hope everybody's doing well. The All my social media is linked down below. Comment down below, like I said. I love talking to everybody, hearing from everybody. I may not be as good about being able to actually reply and link to people like I try to do or have tried to do in the past, but I'm gonna do my best because I really, I do enjoy the conversations and everything. And if there's not a video next Saturday for the Saturday vlog, then that might mean that they squeezed me in for a surgery, which would be a great thing. I don't know. I won't know what's gonna happen until I get there. And that would be a great thing. So really, hopefully there won't be a video next week. Sorry for people who look forward to them, but um, for me, I would be absolutely ecstatic. I cannot wait to have this issue that I've been dealing with for a couple of years, but really it's been the worst the last like seven or eight months to have that done and taken care of and be able to move on with things. So <sighs> there it is. Life updates, new plants, ominous, weird cage thing that I'm just teasing you with and not telling you about because I don't know if it's going to work out. That's the fun thing about projects, right? All right. That's enough rambling. As always, and of the utmost importance, never forget, never stop. Keep on growing. Bye-bye.